So in this fourth video of our RT tutorial, I'm going to go over updating all of the individual ticket things, and then I will briefly talk about your email signature as well. I forwarded an email over to RT Help for the admin because they really need to know about this musician's run sale. They really don't, but it's a good place to start. So we're going to open this ticket, take a look at these headers that we've pretty much been ignoring up till this point. First over here, we have the basics. You click on the header and all of these things are changeable. First thing right up here, you can change the email subject. I like to get rid of the forward part if it was forwarded in. And it's also really useful if you have two or more emails with similar subjects and you kind of need to tell them apart. So you can change the subject to whatever you need. It is going to change the subject to your email. So when you're replying to the emails, that's what the original requester is going to see. That's what the other admin in your queue are going to see. But it it really helps when you've got three emails with the exact same name, because otherwise you have no way of telling them apart until you actually get into them. So you can update the subject and then just hit save changes. In this section, you can also update the ticket status. So if you've already resolved a ticket or someone replied to say thank you and you just need to close it, you can update that here. This is also a location where you can delete individual tickets. There's also a queue section. So if a user sends a registration question to tabletop, it can be updated here. Um, I have all of the queues, but you'll probably only have the ones that you currently have access to. But this is the location where it gets changed. You can also update the ticket owner. Most of these things are updated when you reply or comment to a ticket, and that was covered in video two. But it can be really useful to update those things here if you forgot to update them when you were replying. You can also update the time and priority, but we don't really use those features, so you don't need to worry about those fields. Update whatever you need, hit Save Changes, and you're ready to go. To go back to the ticket view, you could navigate over in your home, go back to the queue, go back to the ticket, but that's really not necessary. You can just click the first option, Display, and you're right back on the ticket. So you can see up here that the ticket name has been changed. Since this is a forwarded email, it's really important to update the people section. It's right under the basics. Just click on the header, and here's the people section. You may have other reasons to update this section, but with a forwarded email, the person who forwarded it to you is the requester. And if you simply reply to the email, it goes back to them and not the original person that actually asked the question. So the first thing you need is the original requester. You can get that from the body of the email, but in this case, ours is musician's friend, so I'm just going to make something up. Let's put Llama as a requester. I'm going to go over here, put Llama in. He is actually one of our staffers, so he just pops up. And then you come over here and choose requester. The other options are CC and admin CC. For the most part, you won't need to mess with the CC and admin CC sections. What's really important is updating the requesters. If you understand the other two options and you want to use them, go ahead. But that's outside the scope of this training series, or at least outside the scope of this video. So we've entered our requester's email. We've entered that it's a requester. You just have to go over here, hit Save Changes. And now our requester has been updated. So Notice we've still got two requesters. We've got the original person that sent it, which was me, and we've got the new requester that we just added in, which was Llama. In some forwarding situations, you may want to keep that original forwarder as a requester, or even change them to a CC so that they can watch the replies. But in this situation, I just want to remove the original forwarder. So all I have to do is I have to click that box and hit Save Changes, and the original requester is gone. Now it's as if that person had just sent it, directly to the queue and never had that middle person involved at all. In this section, there's also an owner. You can update that here as well. And down near the bottom, if you need to remove any of the admin, you can just uncheck their boxes and hit Save Changes. But I don't recommend doing that because this is a list of not only the requesters, but the people that are helping you on this queue and can also help you answer this email. Up here, we also have the search features that can help you find people if you don't really know. So I'm going to enter Amazon and we've got all of these awesome spammers that have been bothering us and I'm just going to set one of them as a requester. This will help me illustrate something later. Holy cow, we've got a lot of them. So many spammers. So you see how that works. If you enter a name that matches a username or an email or their name or their organization, anything that would be in the system, it'll just bring them all up and you can just change their 
status to requester or CC or admin CC without having to know what their specific email address is. So now we've got all the people set and I'm going to head back to display. Over here, we've got our attachments. You may not get this section on most tickets, but it shows up if you actually have attachments in the email. I actually responded to this email earlier and added a picture just so that the attachment section would show up. Very few emails have it, but all of the attachments that are in the thread are going to be here for you to access. Under that, we have more information about the requesters. This is the reason I added the spammer to the account because it doesn't work for staff. So it doesn't show up for me. It doesn't show up for Llama. It doesn't show up for anyone that is actually someone who can handle tickets. It basically just has some info that may be useful, such as all the tickets they currently have open or inactive, or you can click on all the tickets and it shows all the tickets they have. You can also have direct access to their user summary if you need it, which shows all of their tickets as well. Going back to our display, over here we have links. It's more of an advanced feature and something I've never actually needed to change, so you shouldn't either, but you can set up dependencies here if you want to use more of the advanced features and you want to set up dependencies between tickets, this is how you do it. However, if you click on the link, hidden inside this section is ticket merge. It works exactly like how it did in the bulk merge. So you need to know what ticket number you want to merge it into, but it is a little safer than the bulk mode because it doesn't save all of those other options at the same time. So if you only have to merge two tickets, this might be a safer way to go. Otherwise you can still use the bulk. Over here, we have our dates. There isn't really anything useful here that you can update other than time tracking, which we don't do. So you shouldn't need to mess with that. It automatically sets the created and the updated. So there isn't really much there for you to change. And finally, up here, we have the reminders. Honestly, I've only tried using reminders once and the one time I tried it, it didn't work. So I can't really recommend using it. You can try it out, see if it works for you. It might work better for you. I might've done something wrong. I've only tried it once. If I find out more about it, I might do another video on it later. But in the meantime, play with it, see if it works for you. Another thing I can highly recommend is I use follow up then for reminders. So if you really do need a reminder service by email, I recommend follow up then. So now that we've looked at all of these sections, I wanna point your attention to this top menu up here. If you scroll, it stays with you. If you go to a different section, it stays with you. And you can scroll in those sections and it stays with you. This menu gives you access to all of the different sections that that front one has. So you can access the ticket, you can access the basic sections, the people sections, the links. If you hit jumbo, this is all of those header sections split out so that you can update all of them at one time, which includes modifying the ticket, updating the few things on the dates you're allowed to update, changing the requesters. Here's the links. You can update there. You can merge here and you can even comment and reply all in one step. Additionally, it's got this section here of actions, which will take you to the different things you can do. You can reply to it from here, comment, forward it out of RT to somewhere else. If you open it, that brings you to reply. If you resolve it, it brings you to a comment. Reject would take you to a reply. Delete will not take you to a reply or comment. It'll just set the status to deleted. And the actions have changed now that it's been deleted. So there's less options of things to do, but you can undelete it and then make your changes from there. Um, one last thing on this header, there's this star here that bookmarks this ticket. So if you go over to your home and scroll down, here are your bookmarked tickets which can be really useful if there's a handful of, or just one ticket that you have to be handling regularly for a period of time. The last thing I wanna talk about is your signature. RT does allow you to set a signature, but it's not the best functionally. So if you go to reply to a ticket and you look at it, at the top, there isn't any signature. It's all the way at the bottom because it expects you to reply in line, which is something very few of us actually do. I still like to use the signature because it saves me typing it. I scroll to the bottom, I select my signature, I cut it, I go back up to the top, hit enter a couple times, and paste in my signature. Then I can just go up here and reply to it. Notice that it's also set up for registration specifically. If you handle multiple queues like I do, you still only get one signature. Every time I reply to anything that isn't registration, I always have to change that signature. 
We are looking into fixing this functionally so that it's always at the top and we might actually be able to get it to update the signature per queue. But in the meantime, if you use a signature, this is still the best and only option. So the way you set your signature is up under logged in as you, settings, and about me. You'd think it'd be under preferences, but it's not. And then down at the bottom, there's your signature, you update it, and you hit save preferences. So that's how you can update all of your ticket information and your signature.